the red fox, Britain's last remaining wild dog. A creature with the remarkable ability to divide a nation. More than a decade since the controversial hunting act, the fox continues to polarize public opinion and spark political debate. A familiar resident in many of our towns and cities, the hostility between humans and the fox ceases to relent. One of nature's greatest survivors, but can it endure modern day conflicts? This train terminates at Tooting Broadway via Bath. London, home to eight million people. As night falls, the capital belongs to the fox. first urban fox cull in 30 years has been cancelled in the face of a backlash from animal rights campaigners. The cull had been organised after concerns were raised about the threat urban foxes posed deer in a London park. Well, the council team had planned to humanely trap and then destroy the foxes, but more than 7,000 people signed a petition calling for it to stop. Phone lines are open 03459 455 555. I think the council needs to seriously have a word. The, the main issue we have with the foxes here is that they go through our bins. And that is because we are not provided with bins. Like we have to, so our, we've bought our own, I know this is sounds really silly, but we've had to buy our own like metal secure tin. They're 25 quid. And back in Devon, where I'm from, we're provided with two wheelie bins. I'm sorry, why can't we have that here? That would solve the problem. So, whereas we forked out for one bin, fine, but then we still have to take it from the bin outside in our garden to the front. So that's one night when we put our bins out where they're not secure, they're just in a plastic black bag. And that's really, you know, that, that's like a roast dinner for a fox, right? So that's a real issue. If the council could just provide proper bins, um, then the whole problem would be solved, definitely. How do you humanely dispatch a fox? Get shot in the head. That's the end of it. You know, that's that. I would not like to see a fox hole rolled out in London because I really don't see how much of a threat they can be. It's just typical politicians, really. They just clearly wanted to achieve something and blame something else to get it. I'm a really deep sleeper, but I will hear them at like two, three o'clock in the morning and they'll wake me up and it's so annoying. That is the only time where I thought, oh my goodness, I need to shoot one of these damn boxes right now. But that is the only time. 
so yeah, that that is that is my big. I think more than the bins, that's my biggest bugbear. It's not a very pleasant noise. I can't believe we are in 2015 and we still think that it's okay to go and hunt down an animal for sport. Um, hello, go and watch the rugby. It's <laughs> the World Cup at the moment. Off you pop. There's a sport on TV there. I don't get it. It's no, it's barbaric. Nina is an Eton Bray. Good morning to you, Nina. We want to bring fox hunting back and they'll pull it under the umbrella of, oh, we've got a column, so we're going to bring fox hunting back. In 2004, the government passed a controversial legislation that was thought to mark the end of a tradition. Eleven years on, fox hunting has challenged all expectations and refused to be extinguished. While hunts claim to stay within the law, there are those who have been known to defy it. It is day one of the Royal Cornwall Show. Officials are expecting around 120,000 visitors over the next three days, and it's going to be held by some pretty good weather. Some have travelled from as far away as Australia to the show site in Weybridge. Sarah is there for us. <laughs> Hunting in the old sense was that you had no idea what was going to happen. You could have the most boring day on earth, you could have the most amazing day on earth. It's a wonderful way to bring communities together and the hunt is often quite an important role, plays quite an important role in their life. Um, I've been to meets um, as part of my job here where you know you've seen somebody who's sort of 90 odd years old and they've been involved with the hunt since their year, year dot. Um, and it gives them, a, in, and they have such an enormous sort of um, standing in that community, and it, you can just see it doing them so much good coming out and being, I don't know, almost a revered person because they've got that, that moment of sort of knowledge in their heads and everyone knows them, and you know, it, it, it's a lot, it is a really nice atmosphere. And I, I hunted before the ban, um, and I wasn't aware of cruelty. Um, the way it was described to me at the time. I mean, if you're in the field, you don't you don't tend to see foxes being killed by the hounds. But the way it was described to me was that the hounds work as a pack, and the lead hound will get the fox and will kill it. Um, and what and the pictures that those poster hunting like to show of foxes that have been ragged around and looking a bit of a state. Well, that happens once it's dead. You know, it's it's quite different from the picture that people want to give you. It's a very natural way of, of killing an animal. I know that sounds bizarre, but um, I think foxes are a prey animal. They have evolved in such a way they run, and, and it will, being killed by a hound is not going to be any different from them being killed by a wolf or another large predator. We don't have any of those in this country, so man has to be that large predator. Um, and I don't think that the Hunting Act was, was really to do with fox welfare. I think it was more to do with, um, yes, there's a class thing. People do tend to think that people who go hunting are from the sort of upper echelons of society. But I can tell you, uh, if you went out with my local hunt up in Derbyshire, the ma majority of people are farmers, um, mums, you know, it's not sort of hoity-toity posh folk. 
um, we're just sort of normal folk who like going out on our horses and following the hunt. All sorts of different people go hunting, all sorts of different people are saboteurs and anti-hunt people. So you, you obviously it's got some people who are there because they're very much motivated by love of animals and you know they, they hate the idea that foxes have to be killed in the first place. And I have a great deal of sympathy with them, you know. It, it sounds horrible to have to kill an animal but you know, you do unfortunately. Um, then, there, then there's quite a lot of people who seem to be involved in saboteuring as a sort of an extension of various other sort of um, act, activist work that they do. Um, there has been a sort of like a move towards people wearing quite sort of paramilitary gear, um, dressing all in black, wearing a balaclava. Um, and that's really quite useful for them if they're going to be caught on film because you can't tell one person from another. So if violence does take place, which those people are are quite violent some of them um, it's very very rare that they're going to get caught by the police because you can't prove anything it is quite a confusing piece of legislation um, and the aunties are out there with their cameras the whole time trying to trip hunts up and filming them from bushes you know they, they, they're desperate desperate to get a case a big case that will go to court um, and so that they can suggest that people aren't keeping to the hunting act and that hunting altogether needs to be banned and basically people wearing red coats and sitting on horses need to be banned. So we're trying very much not to give them that, um, that evidence but you know they're, they're filming every day so occasionally the old hound's going to um, get on the scent of a fox and accidents do happen. if it starts to get a bit no, I mean if they pack up we've got to follow them haven't we? Uh, yeah well that's where then we will yeah. have to jump in the landing yeah. as quick as and try and keep up with them following them that way. Yeah. So I mean this is a new one from, for all of us so you know how it's going to go we don't know. It's probably changed a bit from the sort of old-fashioned view of savving which was savs running into the middle of fields after the hunt and things like that. Um, now it's more about trying to film the hunt, trying to keep an eye on them, being there so that if they know we're there and they were doing something illegal, we are going to be filming them and we will catch them doing it. That's the nature reserve. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Actually, yeah, they're on the, on the east border of the nature reserve. Isn't that lovely? The law is you can flush a fox out to a gun with two dogs. The hunts try and claim they're exercising by following a trail. So the ban is basically, it's there and it's helping, but it's not strong enough because they can claim accidents all too easily. I've never, I've, never, I've never run into a fox in my life. <laughs> yeah, okay, they, they have fossil on the floor, but as soon as we know they're They hunt them because they call them vermin. But as a matter of fact, the hunts have on several occasions been caught either feeding foxes to encourage them into certain areas ready for hunting. There was a recent case in the mirror last year about 16 fox cubs that were found being bred in a barn ready for either cubbing or potentially being released as a bagged fox. Now they're not being treated as vermin, they are being bred and used specifically so the hunts can then chase after them. It's the whole bigger picture of killing for fun. Copper, how are you doing? Copper? Hello, handsome. What's this? Mm -hmm. 
I got my first fox uh, nine years ago. Mm. And I've been running this for eight, well, seven to eight, between seven and eight years. She came from Manchester. The woman tried to keep you as a pet, didn't she? And then didn't like it because she peed everywhere. You can call any species vermin if you want to. Basically, all it means is a derogatory term, which means an animal that you don't want for one reason or another. My belief's always been if you want people to look after wildlife and appreciate it, they need to connect with it. But foxes, I mean, like so many species, there's all these misconceptions. The media blow everything ridiculously out of proportion um, and exaggerate stories. And they're always painted as villains. And they're not, they're just a predator doing what they need to survive. Thanks. I don't believe in most cases you need to kill any foxes anyway. If you do need to control the odd individual because it's causing a major problem with lambs or whatever, which is very few and far between, then there are quicker and cleaner ways and more selective ways than chasing them for four hours till they're exhausted. They want to repeal the fox hunting <laughs> Fox hunting ban. Um, yes, I love you too. Um, you know, they, they want to gas badgers and shoot badgers. They want to cull, talking about culling the gulls in Cornwall. You know, how could you cull gulls? Because they nick somebody's chips. People, unfortunately, a lot of people are ignorant, don't know the true facts. They have a little bit of knowledge, probably from something stupid blown up in the tabloids, and then they, they make these decisions. One of the things I do, and I haven't trained them to do this, this is really important to know, this is what they do naturally. I've got some treats in my fingers. Watch her. I've seen her slice a rabbit skull in half when she's feeding with those teeth. Look at them. She just clamped them on my finger. As soon as she felt any pressure, she's stopping. That can't be a villain. Considered by some as a pest, both on our streets and in the countryside, where exactly does the fox belong? In July 2015, David Cameron proposed a reappeal of the Hunting Act. A well-known advocate for the country pursuit, clearly the return of hunting was high on his agenda. Once again, Parliament became embroiled in a vicious political debate. It was once said that the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way it treats its animals. The fate of the fox is yet unwritten. <laughs>